Welcome back. In this video, I'll show how to use the Gorilla Mux package to add path variables to our application. And basically what that means is we'll be able to create endpoints that allow for variable content to be passed to our URL. A good example of this is we might create a URL for the specific usernames. Like if my username on the website is Davy, we might have a URL that's slash Davy that'll have maybe all of the updates I posted. So to do that, we need to open up our routes file. And we need to create a new handler that's going to work with these variable path arguments. So go down here to the bottom. I just copied and pasted the index handler so I don't have to type all this out. We're going to call this user get handler because I'm going to have this be slash username. And in here, I can just type username to say that that's the variable that I want to call this this portion of the URL. And I put this handler down at the bottom because Gorilla Mux actually handles routes in the order that they're defined. So we don't ever want a user to be able to have the username login, for instance, because then our paths won't make sense, like slash login, is it the login address or is it the username login? So we're going to have those be handled first. If we handle this first, we would catch all of these in this handler, which is definitely not what we want. So this gives us our new handler, but we have to create the function. Again, I'm just copying and pasting to avoid rewriting all that code. So here's our method. What do we want this method to do? Well, it's going to be something similar to the index handler. We want to return updates for a specific user. First, we have to get the user portion from the path, this username portion. Gorilla Mux makes that pretty easy. We just say mux dot vars and pass in the request. So now Gorilla Mux will parse out the path variables from our request object. And it's going to put them in this variable, which is a hash map of the path variable name and the content that was passed to the URL for that variable. So if we want to get the username, we'll be using vars username. So we've got the username. We need to get all of the updates for that specific user. And that's a problem at this point because all of our updates are only maintained in this one specific object. So if we go to our model, we look at updates. Updates are being pushed onto this updates object, and there's no way to separate the user out. And yeah, we could iterate over every single update and check the user ID and try to pull those out. But a much more efficient way to do this would be to, when an update is published, to just put it on more than one key. So it's going to go on this updates key. That's where everyone's update is going to go. But then it's also going to go on this new key that I'll define as we use fumpt sprintf. So we're going to do some string formatting user, an integer, and then updates. Pass in the user ID. So what am I doing here? I'm creating this new key. And this new key is going to be user colon the user's ID, their integer ID, colon updates. And in that key, we're going to push the update ID. 
So for every new update, we're pushing to two different lists, this updates list and a user specific updates list. And that is exactly what we want. So the only part we need to rewrite now is this get updates method is getting updates for everyone right now. So I'm going to actually rename this to be get all updates. And this is going to be left unchanged. We'll create a new method, which is just get updates. And it's going to take in a user ID, which is always an int 64. But it can't get the updates from this global updates list. We have to figure out what key we're dealing with. We know that. It's what we just defined. So we do the same string formatting so that we get the same update key for this specific user ID. And then we'll pass that key in here. And that should be it. Now there's a lot of code reuse, or a lot of code overlap between these two functions. And later on I'll probably want to refactor these to reuse some code, probably make a little helper method or something that does this redundant portion for each one just to make it more manageable. Right now, I'll just ignore that. That's not the focus of this video. <laughs> so this is still going to work as is, but we're going to copy this because I'm going to use pretty much the same thing down here except get all updates. We know we need to pass a user ID here. But now we have to get the user ID. How do we get the user ID? Let's go back to our user model. Well, we know that we can get the user with this method. So let's grab the user. And the user comes with a potential error. So models dot get user by username. And we've got the username, so that's all good. There's error case there. This is not the right way to handle errors. Uh, there's a scenario here where they try to go to slash a username that doesn't exist, and that should probably be a 404. I'll show you more error responses in a future video. For now, I'm just going to use internal server error. That's incorrect. There should be two errors here. We'll simplify that later, but for now, this will work. So we get the user. And now we need to get the user ID. And there is a method on user objects, which is get ID. So we can type user dot get ID. It does return an error. And again, we're going to need to do this error handling. In this case, it would be an internal server error because it would be a Redis issue. Our data model can probably be revised. Um, to store the key and the ID, or possibly even just to store the ID instead of the key. Because it's more costly for us to be getting the ID from Redis instead of storing it. So we know we can get the key by just a string operation, right? Like the key for the user is user colon and then the integer ID. But it's harder to get the integer. I guess we could parse it from the key. I'm going on a tangent here. I'm going to stop before I go any further. Uh, just know we'll probably be revising how our data is modeled in a future video. But I think it's good to show this progression of realizing, oh, that's that was a good model to use at the time. But then when we added more features later, we realized that model doesn't work. This is how software is written. You 
learn from things as you're developing it. And it's never just, we'll do this and from start to finish, everything goes according to plan. Software doesn't work that way. It's a growing process. Software is like a living thing. It's constantly changing. Features are being added, taken away, refined. Bugs are being fixed. Enough of that tangent. We've got this user ID now. And then supposedly we've got these updates. And if everything works correctly, we should be able to just render those updates to this index template. We'll probably want to rewrite the index template here in a little bit to make it more obvious that you're on a user specific page. But for now, this should work. Let's give it a test. So go to our terminal, type go run main.go. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Looks like it's working. Go to our browser, localhost 8080. This works just fine. Can I go slash Davy? No, I can't because when those updates were published in a previous video, we weren't writing to both keys. This might be a good time to show you a mild tangent, but I'll show you how to go to the Redis command line interface. We can actually see what keys we have in here. So that's interesting. We have some old keys. Like uh, one of the earlier videos, I was putting the bcrypt hash into a simple key like this. So I could do like get user Davy, and that had the, the bcrypt hash for my password. But we've since moved to use this user where we can do h get all user one, for instance. So this has like ID is one. Username is Davy hash is this bcrypt hash. And we had, you know, comments from before. I'm actually going to flush all of this. And that basically just reset our Redis database. All of those keys are gone. Let's exit this, restart the server. Now I'll go to the browser. It's unfortunate that I'm logged in. It's because I still have a session. But in reality, I need to close that browser. There's still a cookie, and so Our web application just sees that cookie and thinks that they're a logged in user. There would be an error if we tried to do anything as that user that doesn't exist because it wouldn't be able to grab it from our user ID. But now we should be logged out. Right. And just proof that our data is actually gone. There's unknown user. Let's go ahead and register again. Well, I just registered without a password. How about that? I guess I'll log in without a password. Why not? So let's create a comment. First, sorry, I wrote first. This is on the index. This is where every user update goes. If we go to slash Davy, you also see that comment. So it looks like it's working. I guess the only test now might be to uh, close the browser just to kill that session. We should probably make a logout method, but for now, whatever. <laughs> I'll go to localhost 8080. Uh, let's create a new user. We're gonna register. 
This one will be Alice. Uh, I'll leave the password blank on this one too. Just so it's easier to remember all these for testing. So we go to Alice's path. She doesn't have that update. But if she posts on the global updates page, if she posts an update, you know, we get both of these updates in this feed and we get her update on her feed and only my update on my feed. So it looks like it's working, like that is the behavior we want. So maybe now would be a good point to show a little bit more in depth on the template handling of this kind of thing. It would be better if this had a title that were Davy, or if we wanted to do like a, you know, a Twitter type thing, we could have a little bar on the left that has maybe my, my avatar, my username over here, and then all of my updates in the center. But somehow I want to be able to differentiate, am I looking at Davy's page? or am I looking at Alice's page? And right now, the only way you can tell is by the updates themselves. But doing some kind of title would definitely be better. So we go back to our code. We're in routes, which is where we wanna be. So we don't have a way to pass the title into our template. How do we pass more than just the updates list? Well, the solution to that is to pass a struct. And we can pass just a, an anonymous struct like this. So I might say um, title is a string. And then updates is a array of models dot update pointers. And then here I can I can specify a title will be all updates and uh Updates will be updates like that. I'll use this exact same thing down here, basically. Except this title now can be our username. And then in our template, we can grab the title attribute from that struct. So then here we need to say this is updates because this is that array of update pointers. Cool, so if we did everything right there, we should be able to go back to our terminal, control C, stop the server, restart the server, go back to our browser, and now if we go to this Alice page, yeah, the title of this page is now Alice, the title of this page is Davy, and if we go to the main page, it's all updates. So it's far from perfect, I can think of one major issue that I have with this, which is if we uh, go to Davy's updates, I'm logged in as Alice right now, I really shouldn't see this post update box. I mean, it kind of makes sense if I'm logged in as Alice and I go to my own updates, I might expect to see a post update box kind of makes sense on the global updates, but it definitely doesn't make sense for Alice to see the post update box on Davy's update page. And in fact, if we try to post something, it's going to fail 
it's going to fail because you know this method not allowed if we look at our code we've implemented the get method for the user handler but we don't have a post method rightfully so I don't necessarily want Alice user to be posting updates on Davy's updates so those are little details we'll probably want to work out in the the template next to render things differently depending on which user you are. I'd also like to add some more style. So in the next video I'm going to clean up this code a bit and style the application a bit more. So bye!